Can you can you show us a move? Your dance? Yeah, we have to have a dance move. Da, 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 da. Oh, wait, that's like Shakira's one. Da, 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 da. Ah. Chakras align. I can do mind. that. <laughs> yeah. Chakra. <laughs> What's up? It's Toya the Lazy. Um, yo, catch me on the Carmen Murray show. I'm gonna be there dropping beats, talking about my story, and of course, resurrection. Zvugile. You know, we up, we awake. Catch me. Don't be late. Hey, 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 Future Fit Tribe. Welcome back to yet another episode, and I'm so thrilled about this one today. Um, not many many times in your life you can actually say that you that you're interviewing a princess um i am sitting here with toya de lazy and she is a zulu princess um from kwazulu natal and she's going to tell us all about um um her tribe and um her life in ro royalty but she's also released a phenomenal album that's going to take the world by storm and I'm privileged to be one of the um, people to discuss with her the story behind the album Resurrection. We're going to go deep today and we're going to have authentic conversation. Without further ado, um, recording artist, Zulu Princess, beautiful soul. Welcome to the Carmen Murray Show. How are you? Hi, I'm great, Carmen. Um, how are you? Thanks for having me. Hi to you. Is, is, my energy, is my energy just too much for you? What? How? Is my energy just too much? <laughs> it, it can go. It can even go higher. It can even go higher. Actually, oh, okay. oh, <laughs> we vibrate high. Man. We vibrate high. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so before we get started, um, I came across um, a Can Lions Festival. It was all about creativity, and there's this incredible um, video that's narrated by. Um, Chaka Sob Sobani, um, Progress Through Creativity. And I want to read it for the audience because I think to understand creativity, we always detach ourselves from creativity and we think it's only certain people that have access to creativity, but we are all creative. And this is how it goes. Creativity is extraordinary. It can come from anywhere and exist in everyone. It's in her, in him, and in them. Blurring the lines between code and chaos, it can take any shape, some of which you would never expect, like all of us, like it's a work in progress. When I choose creativity, I take the harder path, the unfinished surge in pursuit of the exceptional, sprint forward when there's no finish line. Creativity has the power to transform people, build business and shape society in a way that nothing else can. It walks with me every step of the way, through all stages and diversions. It's insight and inspiration, encouragement and connection, milestones of magic. Creativity is not only in anyone, but for everyone. Wherever you are, wherever you are, stay restless, aim higher, push forward. Wow. And that is exactly what you've done. And I would like to go hit in with a question and start off by asking you, what was it like growing up as a Zulu princess? Give us context of, of what is the difference between being from a Zulu kingdom um, and being from a um, from the UK monarch, what is? Give us the context behind the royalty and what life is like growing up as a princess. Hi, okay, hi, Carmen, and thank you once again for that question. Um, hello to everybody who's viewing. Um, that's a really deep question, but I'll try my best to to, to paint a picture. So. Actually, it wasn't fun because I felt really targeted from a young age. Um, when I started going to school, it was like 96 and it was just after apartheid, you know. So, I mean, it was after apartheid, but it hasn't completely dissolved. So I, as a princess, got targeted a lot. 
um, at school. And it's like they were trying to humble me, but I didn't even know I was a princess. It's like something the adults knew and they were just mean. <laughs> and mm. and then, yeah, I just, I didn't know why. And then as I grew up, because my family didn't tell me that, um, I just thought I was just a regular kid, you know, like any other kid. Um, so having my granddad who's in politics, he's a politician. Um, one of the oldest uh, black liberation movements um, he, 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 he was leading it for a very long time. So I guess sometimes some of that wiped off onto us, his kids. And yeah, it was actually, yeah, I, I don't, nobody knew I was a princess. I think these files only came out as I, as I started getting more popular, but it's really not something I really go out telling people, uh, because also it's, um, you know, it's not something I've chosen. It's something that just came, I was kind of like born into it so it's how's the zulu um monarchy it's it's a respectful place um it's a very respectful place um and it seems now usually before in history the women were always the head of of the home that's how the zulus are are shaped even when it comes to courting the woman is the one that goes first <laughs> And she was really? it, girls. Hey, we don't play the Zulus. We the ones that court, you know. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Yeah. So the, the very don't tell my husband that girl. Now he's gonna know. <laughs> 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 so um, <laughs> definitely, we have been we we strong. We as women, we strong. We like lead the home. We we hold the home together. The 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 matriarch is everything, you know. Um, and unfortunately, because of, I'd say, a bit of dabbling from the, the European monarchy, some of our values have also changed, you know, and it's almost starting to look like the UK monarchy, whereas they're reversed and they're Anglicans, you know. I mean, the Zulu family also has Anglican influence in it. But um, what I'm saying is th that's the point for Zulus to be Anglicans. It's for me is wow, you know. It's, um, and it's, it's, there's so many things that don't align with, well, especially my own spirituality. And I guess I started seeing those things, mm. uh, where it felt like mm. I needed to start chipping pieces of who I was off or live a, mm. living a way where I'd never be myself. So it was very hard to be wholly proud of something like, you know, that, that, you know, it's an institution where there's, you know, I grew up surrounded by very powerful institutions, religion, politics, royalty. And these things were telling me who I am meant to be. And society was expecting that child to come out, you know. And I was just suffocating in it all. So I think it just got to a point of trying to please you is not enough. Um, I need to find me. Mm -hmm. And I'd rather follow that because anyway, I was dying trying to trying to be everybody else, you know. So I just... It, it it was almost like, it's a tough word to say, but it, it was a decolonization that I, I, I went through. What better said as a rehabilitation, I had to rehabilitate myself from all that indoctrination and all those things that, honestly, I just came to earth and, you know, it's crazy when you get there and there's already a set of rules and like, this is who you need to be, this is what's right, this, you know, it's a lot. So, yeah, it's been interesting for me. I mean, maybe some people wish for it but it, i don't know <laughs> i mean it's 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 fascinating because if you look at the story between Meghan markle um princess Meghan markle and and prince harry as a child she always wanted to be oh. a princess right and it was just one thing and, she, and, and it manifested and she met and she met um prince harry and they fell in love yeah. and he hated um, living in royalty, and I don't know if you know, like recently, I, know. I mean, you, no, you man, think been <laughs> so, dropping them bombs, yeah, like, yo. <laughs> and he's <laughs> left, um, um, because but he's also like, if you look at his history, he's 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 been very different, he's very unique, Human. and a little bit of a rebel, an outsider, and um, you know, and and still, you know. I, I have so much respect for, for people that, that find their authenticity and eventually live not just to serve others, but to serve themselves. Because I think that's, that's where yeah. you can 
through self-mastery can make Absolutely. a difference, right? He inspires me. He's been one of my inspirations from a very young age. Being in royalty and finally having a glimpse of somebody who's not completely besotted in it, you know? It was great. Mm. He's been an inspiration of mine. I hope to meet him one day. My granddad's met him already. But like, not because I want oh, us really? to rebel together, but maybe, you know, it's just... <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he must dance to your music because he's got yeah, rhythm. Let me know, tell you that. And Megan <laughs> as well. I just think they're so <laughs> inspirational. It's so hard when you come from a place like that to choose your life, to make your life. Have you seen how people have been dragging them? I mean, of course they had to do what they had oh, to do. Terrible. And us, me watching from also a real perspective, it's it's like, wow, I mean... It's tough. What they've done is not a joke. It's not easy to talk about the things that have traumatized us, especially when there's blood involved. So it's incredibly brave to protect their children. And um, yeah, I really love them. And I mean, like, there's a lot of similarity between your story. If you look at, um, you left South Africa and you're in yeah. the UK now, right? Um, and and you left your your royal royalty and and you move to progress forward um and become part of the melting pot and now um that's what they've done and they've just been scrutinized for it have you felt that you've been scrutinized for leaving um well i definitely felt um isolated ignored and maybe some people hope that i'll just like come running back you know but I, I'm very, I was very determined and I've gone through really tough times with myself, extreme loneliness and solitude, you know, to get here. It hasn't been easy. I mean, you're talking to somebody who's already lost both parents, you know, and last year I lost my grand. Like I've gone through mm. quite a bit. When you lose those things, um, what else do you have? So this music, more than just becoming mm. music, it's been my salvation. It's all I have got. Otherwise I'd have to which I, I would hate, fall back on something that has suppressed me so much as a human being and as a female. Um, one thing that I, that, I, that, that I think is standing out for me right here, right now, is the importance, and audience do listen to this and take this advice, is don't inherit somebody, somebody else's religion value system. system. You have exactly. to have your own That's value system. That's why religion system. is a bit weird. Especially when it's enforced. It's a belief system. <laughs> a belief system needs to be for yourself. I was in places where they use the belief system to carry out their own narrative. So what do you own when somebody takes your faith? What do you have on earth? If somebody takes your faith, how do you even believe in yourself? Mm. You know, it's a very painful process. And what they mixed up, gratitude is known throughout Africa. We always, every culture has a way of saying thank you to the universe for a new day. And that was monetized. Like when we realize what was done, it's like, mm. of course, people can't leave their faith because they feel like they live in God. And now they need to follow what you're saying because you are the spokesperson all of a sudden of God. And we never had that. Uh, Ubuntu, Africans always knew about God. I mean, there's names for God that are ancient that the Zulus used to use. Also, Mandla, or Smagate, or Somnini. There's so many. And, th and, these, and these described God, you know, so we knew God. But, you know, that mix up there really almost tainted something so beautiful, such as gratitude. I almost lost that after going to a Christian school that totally destroyed me, literally, like mentally. And, yeah, they just took my identity. And I was like, this is you. And to break out of that is because now your family is also like, you need to go to you you're in the school you have to do well but like to do well you have to follow the rules and if you don't you fail so it's like each time you're just losing chunks of who you are at the end you're nothing that's how it, it was just i can't explain like it's too deep to explain it's I, nobody would understand yeah no, <laughs> until I, I you're completely there, hear you, know? you. It, it, no nobody can walk in those shoes and I, i'm also just thinking how brave it's you taken are a long time. how courageous you are because it's not just about 
it's taken a long time, but look at you now. Like you are so respected. I posted that I'm going to, you know, you, you, you did a video and I posted it um, and that, you know, this interview is, is happening. And um, people were like, oh my word, like you are oh. so loved by so many people because you're, you're real, you're authentic. But importantly is something that, that I have so much love and respect for is the fact that being a royal, very religious, being bullied at school, still you had the courage to to come to to become you, and knowing that you are different, and it's it, and celebrating it. And I mean, you're part of the LGBTQ yeah. um, community, and I th I think it's beautiful, but it's also sad because religion punishes you for that. So that now you're facing another form of yeah. ostrac uh, being ostracized, right? Um, and it's just coming from different angles and you actually have so much more to deal with yeah. than an ordinary person. And not that I'm taking away from anybody. We all have a story and we all go through a difficult time, but how, how did you, how, how what was that conversation like? Um, to say, hey, this um, is me. I think it was after I, met, I left that mission. I was 18. My mom had just passed away. Um, and on top of that, they used that situation to try keep me on the narrow. Like saying, oh, she passed because of not following God's... Which wasn't true. It was an accident. I was 18. I don't think you understand the level of trauma I went through. So I was petrified about going into the real world. And I wanted to just stay there and hide, but I was—it was I was already in in grade twelve, so I had to leave. And then here I was outside in the world with no mom. Uh, yes, I, I mean I got my family, but you know, it's it's parents are everything. It's that it's that it's, it's just yeah, it's one of those feelings that I'm glad I got to experience at least in my life. You know, um, so then I was just. Literally doing nothing, just lying around in the uh, at the palace at home, like just doing nothing really. Um, and then I was just depressed. <laughs> I don't know what to say. I was just depressed. And then eventually I was like, if I don't love myself, no one's gonna love me because nothing was happening. My depression wasn't spoken anyone to be like, "Yo, you okay? Mm -hmm. Like, how could we?" You know, everything was all right. The trauma from the school was mm. all right. It was brushed under the carpet. I had nobody to talk to. So music was my healing point. And honestly, even while I was there, I used to go play piano. I, I started playing piano from nine and the sounds mm. always healed me. It felt like a place I could breathe and forget about stuff. You know, it's like that moment of um, Zen and mm. I could speak. I could actually say what I was feeling because the, the toughest thing about... Mm any mental block is not being able to articulate what you're going through. So music started to be that platform for me. And then mm. I was just like, my only option right now is to get to university and study jazz. Cause it's the only thing I can do naturally. It's the only way in, like, I'm not gonna, I, I mean, they expected me maybe to do it. I did a bit of it, but that's not where it was. Like the point where I was happy and free and not, and I don't feel like I'm working or panicking. And just flowing, you know, like you and Z was music. So I was just like, after that, I left home and 18, yeah. And I went to university in Durban. Uh, my dad at the time was alive. So, yeah, but it was, yeah. And then I I, made, I managed to just get enough money for registration. And people are shocked, like, why? They think, oh, princess and stuff. Well, my, I still lived with my mom at times, you know. And we had a regular life with my mother, like... It wasn't like fancy or anything. We had a regular life. I know the life of every South African. I know how it's like to struggle to get into university. I know how it's like to squat. I squatted for a whole year. I couldn't get accommodation, you know. And these are things I can't mm -hmm. talk about because you always have to keep up sure. a, a facade. of. And that's why I think finally breaking the facade and being like, I'm, I'm suffering. Sure. I need to choose me because otherwise what happens? We die and people just like, oh, move on. Oh, uh, like you mm -hmm. know, but there were real issues going on. So, thank God, though, I was happy for all of it. The fact that I could get out of that entire realm of toxicity 
was enough. I didn't care I was squatting. I was going mm, out to school. Mm. I could study, even though it was a tough ride, but like I was in school and I could study jazz and I had teachers and I was learning something and they saw potential in me. So I, I grew from uh, just a uh, classical pianist into a jazz pianist. And, and then I started like playing some of these songs for my friends and they were like, dude, you can sing. Like, uh, why don't you come to the pub? <laughs> <laughs> why did you come to the pub <laughs> and then i was like yeah i'll come to the pub Love the show so i started playing at the winston pub in durban honestly my first audience was three people two friends and the sound engineer but i <laughs> listen to that you see it started with three yeah, people and yeah. look at you today three people better talents than you even <gasps> imagined you're now living free wow yeah. so imagine now after i've left that school high school Hey, and I was still scared. Hey? I still had my hair shaved short because I didn't want God to judge me. They literally told us if you play <laughs> with your hair, you don't like the way God made you and you will burn in hell. Like burning in hell is not a joke. You don't threaten people with fire. It's just like not a vibe. Really? Like you don't want, you don't want the person you're grateful to, to burn you in hell. And like, imagine like, so I'd plait my hair sometimes and I'd feel pretty. And then I'd start having these mental shutdowns. Like, oh my God, God's going to kill me. Like if I die, I'll go, to, you know, I, oh, it was messy. So going to Durban, I started meeting humans. I feel <laughs> other people, normals, normal people. And I started learning <laughs> the world and I was so open to it because I, number one music, I wasn't allowed to listen to secular music. TV was called the devil's box. So it was, it was the, I mean, at home I could. <laughs> hey, I think yo, we've boy. been raised it's in the lit, same lit. household. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yo. <laughs> I know, you've come a long way. <laughs> yo. It's hectic. Now, nah. so imagine, so like, oh, the relief of meeting normal people. Look at it. Yeah. I slowly intricate, int you know, I started wearing pants a bit because we weren't allowed to wear skirts. Women wearing skirts is satanic as well. <laughs> but anyway you, you know what I, oh my god <laughs> it was crazy <laughs> i'm i'm grateful to be alive it's not even it's mad you know and it's not like i'm the only i'm not the only one that's the saddest part so many haven't made it out you know some some of my friends are mm. Mm. i could mm. swear right now that's how messed up they are severe depression like I'm a person, I draw energy from people. I, I, if I was with you and having you around me, you and I will have such Turn a up. blast and, and our energies will just like explode. It's almost like a, like I touch people and it's, wow. it's a, when I touch people, they shock. Like since a little girl, yeah, like they were, like you literally see the blue light. I've got a superpower. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Um, but anyway, my husband, when he tries to give me a kiss, um, you can literally sometimes see the static oh. blue. Like, he's sometimes so, wow. so careful. It's crazy. But, um, static but maybe it's the clothes I wear. Thing. Maybe it's my hair. My, I don't know. <laughs> um, but anyway, I'm going to say, You're vibrating I'm full of electricity. So during, during, <laughs> so during the lockdown, um, having people taken away from me um no. is was all i started developing social anxiety no. which is strange so i actually don't feel comfortable at the moment being around that oh. having started uh, my journey with a therapist um starting to develop mental illness um mental health where um, I'm, I'm, I'm working so hard three to four hours sleep, my brain shutting down, my creativity shutting down. Um, and, 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 you know, a lot of people are ashamed to talk about this, but I think it's an important conversation. And I went to go and sit with my doctor. Um, and also because strokes run in our family. Um, it was a very tough conversation. And my doctor said to me, Carmen, if you don't start sleeping your six to eight hours a day, you you won't be able to live your dream 
of 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 your business, your um the big goals that you have for your life. You know, you might be you might have a stroke, or um you know you're gonna lose your your sense of creativity, and the only way you're gonna be able to get it back is through lots of sleep. And um, you kind of feel like everybody around you is saying the same thing. I'm so tired. I'm so tired. And you feel like people don't have compassion for your story when you tell people close to you because then they compare their story to yours. And in that moment, you realize, holy crap, this is actually freaking big. One in three people are suffering from mental health illness. We now have a mental health pandemic. And, and and there's no there's no like you, you, you no there's no support structure. I feel like there's no I, and 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 um, so if you look at Alcoholic Anonymous, they get together in a group and they they talk their problems out. You get the same for codependency. There's there's groups where people get to be together talking with psychologists um, and and um, you know rehabilitators about their problems of codependency. But apparently the codependency wow. meetings is the enabling place for them. Getting uh, getting into that support structure because of codependency. So I I feel like we don't oh, have enough support for, for people going through mental mental health. There's not a lot of brave conversations happening. Yeah, so um, if you also, for example, think about uh, medical AIDS, um, when you mm. tell the medical aid that AIDS that you suffer from anxiety, right, um, or you <sighs> have had wow, depression before, cold. anything like that, your premium increases. Um, so I'm just wondering... You know what is the what is the, the the health healthcare industry doing to support the health pandemic that we currently have? Um, what transparent conversations needs to happen? Um, pe- people are denying their mental Ooh. health because they are petrified that they might lose their jobs because there's still the stigma about it, and mm-hmm. that's why, like Prince Harry, I have so much admiration, Lady Gaga. Like yeah. they all come out and they say, listen, guys, this is serious. And, and it's, I mean, like, I mean, like, how do you, how do you, how do you feel? How did you cope through, um, you know, especially as an artist? Because I mean, I think this was also a very scary time for everybody um, that didn't yeah, have secure yeah. jobs. You, are, you were either in the jo- up, right huh? job at the right time. Like I'm in tech. digital yeah. um, and in marketing. Um, so Living it up in the city, like I Whoa. like I can sing like Bruno Mars for you. That's <laughs> good. Dad. But anyway, um, de- <laughs> no, it's the only words I can remember. <laughs> um, but then you have people that, like for example, artists that felt paralyzed through through the pandemic, and you know what now? Like I can't have a concert. I, you know. How do I? How do I make money? How am I going to survive? I mean, Ooh. what did you go through the moment? So basically, this I just dropped um, Funani, and that was like I envisioned Afro Rave. I knew what it was, and now I was ready to go. And we had just dropped Funani. It was on Boiler Room, uh, best as one of the best videos of 2020, shot with Carl Lewis and. So it was an exciting time, March. So I was planning to finally go home, maybe for a bit, do some touring, you know, just start propagating the gospel of Afro Rave. Um, Only to, like, lockdown happens and everything gets pulled off. Everything. And already, I mean, you're talking to somebody who, 2015, I went to independent. So I'm finding everything by myself. I'm working, just me and Ali, like uh, my manager. So... It, it, we were like a team of two, so everything counts, you know, especially when you move to the UK. It's not a joke, that pound. When Especially when politicians can say whatever, next mm. thing, it's like, it's 22 to, to a rand, you know? Like, a rand is, is 22 rand and a, to the pound, you know? Like, it's... Yeah, when that happens, your budgets mm. get sliced, you know, and, and, it, and it makes it really, really, really difficult. So, we had already been going through that. I mean... 
Yeah. You know, I because I've been here six years now, so a lot of things happen. You know, whether it was Zuma must fall, then there's a dip or or whatever. You know, like th- 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 there'd been a lot of these incidences. So finally, I get to this point, we're standing, and I'm like, okay, now we're about to go. And then COVID did what it did. So, and already I was, you know, I was really in a tight space. My grand grandmother had just passed away. I didn't even yeah. go home for the funeral because. Here I am pushing this thing and I'm also a million miles away, you know. And um, it felt sure. like, oh my goodness, has it all been for nothing? Because there was no support mm-hmm. from government. There was no support from anybody. Um, we were stranded. We were alone. We had no support. Nobody cared. Nobody, like, nobody cared. We had nobody to turn to as artists. And it was really sad. I tried to help a lot of my fans. Like, I had a 10K giveaway for Im- immediate needs. Like... I think I sent about 70 people, 250, just for immediate because people were suffering. Like the messages I got in my inbox, I was like, I need to start a foundation. Like, I, I, and I did, sure. it's called Kawe Foundation. And there I'm hoping to like, yeah, help people, you know, especially in the townships, like the girls that look up to me and those people that were struggling so bad. Like there was a dad with like four kids and now we can't go to work because it's locked down. And, and in South Africa, I don't know if you guys remember how intense it was. People were getting shot for beers. We're forgetting about this now. People were getting shot and killed. The army was, was, was tripping out in those streets. Like, yeah, treating people like that, like triggering the past. Because like we have a really mm. unhealthy relationship with authority because of the past. And how authority has abused its power. So... It was a tough time seeing that because I'm very close to people. Um, This is, you know, it was a lot. And on top of that, my own stuff, you know, and no funding going in. I was just living on savings. My South African rand was getting chowed because things were just low. (laughs) It was going sideways. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, so um, it was tough. (laughs) It was tough. Um, oh, and frugal innovation. Like, that's what, what this album did. So I was just like, you know what? I'm just going to finish this album. I don't know what's going to happen next. All I can do now is just finish this project. I've got to, this is, this is all I had. And that's what we did. I just started hitting up my friends' studios, Joy, Joy Anonymous, Raph Riley. And we just mm. would hang. We'd just get there and whatever we're feeling on the day, talk about it. It became therapeutic. And that's what you'll find with these songs. They're really therapeutic. And something we've added to it is that they're all going to be translated. So even though they're in Zulu, the poetic meaning is going to be revealed. Um, and you'll understand, you know, because there's power in language. The fact that people don't understand doesn't mean it's, uh, you know, not valuable. Oh, wow. Every language is powerful. And I think noticing how suppressed our languages have been and how languages are dying out. It came upon me to be like, yo, I need to the words came in Zulu, you know, mm-hmm. like that's how I write, you know, it's, it's intuitive, it's, it's feelings, it's pure, it's real. Yeah. A, a song that's just come out as well as part of the pre-order is teeny. And that is about mental health in the black community, how we deny it acting like it's not there. Um, it's, it's like, there's many topics we haven't visited, like the effects of apartheid and the fact that we all mm-hmm. should have gotten psychological, psychiatric or Sangoma help, whatever spiritual mm-hmm. help. Instead of religious um, rule further, you know, because we're already broken at that point. Yeah. And we all of us did not have the tools to deal with what had just happened because we must understand yeah. apartheid programmed both the enslaved and the enslaver, you know. Yeah. We were both programmed. So it's a mess. It's, everybody needed therapy. Everybody needed, yeah. whether you call it decolonization or yeah. rehabilitation, we needed rehabilitation. That has not happened. We've been just dragging these wounds. We've been dragging these wounds all along and thinking of my people. I so like, agree with that. The traumas of the traumas mm. of the traumas that they've been dragged, that they're still not dealing with, you know, like when I say it's even in, affected the Royal house, you know, the way that the rules, foreign rule influenced and, uh, you know, impacted us, you know, it was, it's a big change um, because through that we lost our blackness or I say, I refuse to be called black because black is just a, uh, I, it's, I don't think it's a term. I'm Zulu, you know, it's, it's just, a. how do you say black is just a label. Yeah, it's like people colored. Like, 
we need to know where these people yeah. come from. They need to know their history. Yeah. They do not know. And and it's sad because I speak I've spoken to a lot of people that identify yeah. as colored and I'm like, but where are you from? You know, like I'm sure there's but they, there's a history of because I at least know and I guess I'm privileged. I'm one of the privileged few to know my history, to know what the Zulus have done, fighting the British in 1879, winning in Sandrana, that we fought for our values. I can track some things down and, and knowing mm. that is empowering. That's why this album also has come at a time we've lost our king, we lost our queen. That's, as a nation, you know, it's like, what a, you know, what, what can they get? What, what is it now we stand for? You know, it's to remind them we are strong, sure. we, you know, and to now show ways of healing. It's all about healing now. You know, there's really no other thing that's worth talking about. We should be just talking about healing and focusing on, on that. But I can only do my part with the music because that's my gift and I'm, and I'm giving it fully, you know, like I can do my part in that way, but we need to do more as a, as a, as a, a society. <laughs> but I mean, the, the, the yes, upside to this yes. is the resurrection. Yes. yes. And before and that's the healing. The upside the is healing, the resurrection when you get born again and you come back transformed. <laughs> Break through hell and go to heaven. <laughs> so, um, I'm. We're gonna just play a tune from um, from Toya's album, and then we're gonna talk more about yeah. Yeah. the rhythms and, and how um, everything came together yeah. <laughs> and the beats. Ah, all of that. Okay. <laughs> Wow, that was resurrection. Right. So we've talked about all of these dark moments and all of a sudden it is like the rebirth. Your creativity was reborn. Um, and <laughs> you are spreading the beats of oh. Africa with rave not hello <laughs> i did rave in the 90s we used to have fo <laughs> foam parties uh -uh. right what on earth <laughs> do you remember those foam parties <laughs> i don't know maybe you too young but anyway What's we used to have foam party? parties okay well maybe you should you should, you should do a foam party with this one <laughs> it could Is be it very therapeutic blowing bubbles no i'm joking you don't How know do what you make the foam, foam do you just <laughs> bubble machine <laughs> Yes, yeah. it's exactly that. Like they, they used to have like like, well, we're like the foam used to be like up to your shoulders, yeah, and then you, you will dance in the foam. <laughs> I am going to send you a clip that you so can cute. see it. <laughs> it used to be yeah. my favorite thing to do, but um, anyway, <laughs> the, the, the childhood innocence there. Um, to talk to talk to me about how did you bring oh. these beats together and and. You know, healing, you would think that you would go with a more, yeah. you know, calm, it's pent up energy. relaxed point. If you can't let go of all these things, if you, if like the seed doesn't let go of the soil, it will never grow into a tree. You may have been buried. We are seeds, but you got to let go and trust the process and grow. So you got to let go. Um, so in, in Zulu, in Zamu, you got a lot of drums. I've always loved drums. And like, I saw the connect when I was introduced to Rave. And how it made me feel, you kind of have this outer body experience where you're just lost in the music. And it takes you there. And those moments are the golden ones. Those are the moments where you let go. And everything is, you know, the biggest gift you can give to the universe is being at peace with yourself. When you're at peace with yourself, you're at peace with the universe. You're aligned. You are manifesting, you know. So, and all these things were blocking us from manifesting, you know. So, you need, you need a beat that wakes up your, your heart chakra. You need to feel that. You need to feel that moment. You need to understand. And so the rhythm counts a lot. And of course, the words. Music is a very, for me at least, a very spiritual thing. It's, it's, yeah. As I said, it's always been about healing, you know. So the beats counts. And honestly, after lockdown, who wants a slow jam? Not me. I'm trying to rave it out. I'm trying to rave it out. <laughs> I love it. I love it. 
<laughs> can you can you show us a move? <laughs> Your dance? Yeah, we have to have a dance move. <laughs> da, 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 da. Oh, I like that's like Shakira's one. <laughs> da, 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 da. <laughs> Chakras alive. I can do that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Chakra. <laughs> African from Peter Maritzburg. His name is Mshi. Very underground, humble guy, sweet guy. And it was so nice to collaborate with him. But he's got the rave spirit. He gets it. You know, the fine line between boom and rave. So the whole thing is about putting worlds together. You know, we've been through all this pain. We know it. It's about now uniting through rave and just raving it out, you know, raving it out, talking if we need to talk, you know. Um, and that's what I love. The people I've collaborated with here are Joy Anonymous. Like, imagine you come to the UK and then all of a sudden I I felt to rap in Zulu to him. Like, they're telling me I got the buzz for Shamaka. So I'm rapping. And then these guys hear it and they're like, oh yes, my goodness, they that. love the anomatopoeia. Is that how you say it? They love the clicks. They just loved it. And they were like, what does it mean? Luckily, I'm, of course, I'm not swearing people out. And um, it's just telling a story. And that's how it started one producer and a really big one i was really lucky rough riley heard me rapping a cypher and he was like oh dude let's do studio um and then we made goma the first song and then that's how afro River was born but i'm just showing you it was the meeting of two different cultures and we found a, a way of communicating and that's what it's it's become and and i love the unity i'm all about the unity i think when i talk about issues it's to see how we can see. unite not to point fingers in the eye it's, it's too late for that now it's like healing our clock it's healing our clock yes give me a zulu word that can i can pronounce and that the, the audience can learn that we should we should know ubuntu okay, do you know that, that one? one ubuntu ubuntu yes, and, and, and tell people what ubuntu is ubuntu. a very important word here yes it's our african religion and it means I am because you are. Umuntu, umuntu ngabantu. So it teaches us respect, irregardless of how the person is, whether they differently abled, sexuality, color. We are uh, people of respect. And without respect, there is no future. So sin ubuntu. So ubuntu. Always remember that. Umuntu, umuntu ngabantu. I am because you are. Beautiful. What a way to finish off. Thank you so much. That was so incredible. I had so much fun. Bye and thank you. We're gonna we're gonna sing you out with a song. Come on, listen to this. Bye, Toya. Bye. Bye. Bye.